Welcome into our midst, uh, Father Gomi. Father Gomi is a classmate of Father Niemal's from Sri Lanka, and he's going to be here for the next four months, uh, acclimatizing to Canada. I asked him, why did you want to come to Canada? You know? And he said, well, the first time I came, it wasn't winter. <laughs> We are allowed to, we received word from the Archdiocese that we are allowed to sing again. So we're going to sing all the parts of the Mass. We can uh, uh, sing uh, the hymns. That's why the hymn numbers are up for you. So uh, we invite you to sing. Um, it's the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm your presider and your homilist. So I invite you to sing with our gathering song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. As we come together to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the Lord's Day, we recognize our need for God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. David and Abashai went into Saul's army by night. There Saul lay sleeping within the encampment with a spear stuck in the ground at his head. And Abner and the army lay around him. Abishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand today. Now, therefore, let me pin him to the ground with one stroke of the spear. I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can raise his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So David took the spear that was at Saul's head and the water jar, and they went away. No one saw it or knew it, nor did anyone awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on top of a hill far away, with a great distance between them. David called aloud to Saul, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and get it. The Lord rewards everyone for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, but I would not raise my hand against the Lord's, the Lord's anointed. As your life was precious today in my sight, so may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he rescue me from all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, made of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the one of dust, so are those of us who so are those who are of the dust. And as is the one of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the one of dust, we will also bear the image of the one of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, Offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the grateful, to the ungrateful, and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is natural to reciprocate, to help those who help you. 
and maybe hurt those who hurt you. Do unto others as they do unto you is simple justice. Maybe simplistic justice. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The problem is that do unto others as they do unto you has morphed into do unto others before they do unto you. And as one wealthy rancher is reputed to have said, all I want is what is mine and what adjoins it. In such a dog-eat-dog world, reciprocity seems to be enlightened. Yet Jesus tells us that reciprocity is not kingdom behavior. Just as God goes beyond justice to mercy, we are to do the same. And it is a hard lesson. In a sense, it goes against the grain. It's sort of unnatural. Yet we can only move beyond justice to mercy through the grace of God. So Jesus begins this gospel passage with this statement, love your enemies. And then he gives concrete examples to illustrate what he means by this. And he organizes these into two sets of three examples. The first one, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And the second set, those who strike you on the cheek, offer the other also. Those who take away your cloak, don't withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who asks. Don't ask those who take away your goods to give them back. And they're organized like this, I think, to give us a bit of a flow and, a, and, and an emphasis. And the interesting part a couple of interesting things. The first set are sort of um, very generalized ideas. The behaviors are general, you know, to hatred and cursing and, and abuse. And to be sure, these can impact us in different ways, manifest themselves in our lives. The second set is far more specific. Those behaviors are, are quite specific. Striking a cheek, taking a coat, taking goods. And the other interesting part, as I did some research in a, in a study Bible that I've got, is that the you that is used in the first set of three is a plural you. And the you that is used in the second set is a singular you. So the plural you is talking to all of us, talking to the crowd, to love, to do good, to bless, to pray. But in the second set, that singular you means that, in a sense, when Jesus says, turn the other cheek, give to everyone who begs, he's speaking to us individually. Like It's almost like he's pointing his finger at each of us and saying you. And then when he comes back to the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, it goes back to the, to the plural. And these examples indicate that, that love is not simply a feeling, but love has to manifest itself into action. We are to act in ways that are calculated to benefit the other person, to make that other person's welfare our concern. We're not to wait to see what that other person does in order to figure out what we will do. No. And we're not to be trapped in some vicious cycle that someone else starts. 
in the past few months, I've observed how divisive things have gotten with COVID-19 and with vaccines and mandates and vaccination policies, vaccinated and unvaccinated. And I would say that eight months ago, I was a, a, a rabid vaxxer. And I'm not saying that those who had different opinions are my enemies or anything like that, but I've tempered my own position. And that really came about because of a conversation with one person whose family member had suffered a, a life crippling uh, reaction to a vaccine over 30 years ago. And so I would say that, that I've tempered my own position and I, I respect people's choice to make different decisions, even if it's not the decision that I would make. And even I think it's not wise, I have to respect their decision and how they came to their conclusion. And so I, I don't engage in, in social media or, or in any public forum in these debates. I realize that it's really not going to be any free five, ten words that I'm going to put on social media that's going to change somebody's mind from a decision that they've deliberately taken. And as disciples of Jesus, we're called to seize the initiative by loving, by doing good, blessing and praying. And these, these behaviors might seem to be weak in the face of hatred and violence, and yet Jesus transforms them. On the cross, he did not curse his enemies. He prayed for their forgiveness. And over the centuries, there are many who have chosen that uh, power of love. Francis of Assisi, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., even somebody like Gandhi, chose love. The power of love, that love can win, that it overcomes the world. And the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, challenges us not only to avoid the behaviors that we would not want to experience, but to do the behaviors that we want to experience. And here, here at the table of the Lord, as we celebrate the death and resurrection, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, we are empowered to love in action, to live out that love of God that we have experienced in Christ Jesus our Lord. invite our catechumen and candidates to come forward with their catechists. My friends, we send you forth to reflect upon the word of God, which you've heard proclaimed in our midst. Know of our prayers for you as you journey to the table of the Lord. Go in peace.
to overcome. As a family of faith, we profess that faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, responding to the compassion shown us by our merciful God, let us pray we overcome all self-interest as we intercede for the good of the whole church, the needs of our community, and the salvation of all people. For the church, sacrament of God's unconditional love to the world, and for the Spirit's guidance and action in the synodal mission of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For diplomacy that brings, brings reconciliation and peace in Ukraine, for all leaders called to work for justice and peace, and for the free flow of humanitarian aid throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who respond with generosity to the needs of the poor and suffering, and for human compassion toward victims of famine, disease, and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For indigenous leaders, for all families affected by the residential school system, and for church and civil leaders called to listen and seek truth and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people preparing to celebrate a sacrament, for couples preparing for marriage, and for parents as they raise their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the physical and spiritual well-being of all parishioners, for all who suffer with and from poor mental health, for all who are sick, including Stephen Cranston, Lino Adorcio, and all those on our parish sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ recently, including Kenneth Klempert, Vince de Gasparis, Lise Southern, and for all who mourn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate and merciful God, hear our prayers and pour out your love upon us, that with good and generous hearts we may refrain from judging others and live your ways of compassion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give, all, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the risen Lord who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
invite our Minister of Communion to the homebound to come forward. We send you forth bearing the word of God and the bread of life. Assure those who cannot be with us of our prayer and our concern for them and ask for their prayers in return. Go in peace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. We invite you to be seated for a moment. So I was on my way to the doctor Monday morning. It was probably not a wise decision to have a doctor's appointment the Monday after Super Bowl. But, uh, uh, and uh, you know it's not a good thing when the director of priest personnel calls you before 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. Uh, I told you last week that Father Vito Marziliano uh, died suddenly. And... Uh, there's a priest in Thornhill at Good Shepherd who is going on a, a four-month leave, and so they had a priest lined up to take his place, and, uh, and then Father Vito died, and so they need to send that priest to St. Patrick's uh, because he can uh, celebrate in Italian. He can speak Italian. So, uh, so they called me asking for Father Neomal to go to be administrator of Good Shepherd Parish in Thornhill. So uh, Father Neomal is going to be leaving on March 1st. And we don't know how long. We don't know if it's for the four months and then he comes back or what the deal is going to be. But uh, his last Sunday is next Sunday uh, and as he goes off to being an administrator at Good Shepherd. So Father Gomi, who uh, had uh, four months to adapt, now has four days to adapt. <laughs> uh, and Father Scott is also going to help us out too. So uh, I thought maybe we were chock-a-block full of priests, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. Uh, so this week, so uh, look, you get to look forward to uh, uh, the pandemic snack, right? The, the dad's cookies and the, and the bottle of water as we say goodbye to Father uh, Neomal next Sunday. Uh, in the parish this week, uh, our young adult ministry is uh, meeting online tonight after the 4 o'clock Mass, so at 5.30. Uh, Monday, the Mass, because of the holiday, the family day holiday, is at 9 a.m. And the office is going to be closed and the church will close after the Mass. Uh, Tuesday morning, we have Christian meditation at 10.30 online. And that link is on the website. Uh, Tuesday evening, we have the parent-child reconciliation meeting at 7 o'clock. And the same meeting is repeated Saturday afternoon at 2. And parents have received uh, an email about which uh, uh, session to go to. So please go to the one that you're assigned. And uh, this week on Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, we're hosting the, the zone meeting. So the priests of Simcoe County are gathering with the Bishop Wassano, and that will be in the parish hall. So if you come to the 1210 Mass on Thursday, you'll be seeing some priests hanging out in the parish hall. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.